So how, step by step, how do you convert a DFA into a CFG? How, how to convert a, an automaton, a deterministic finite automaton, a DFA, into a context-free grammar, CFG? So how to go from a machine, you know, an automaton, into a grammar. Right? They seem to be two totally different things. But um, by doing the steps I'll show here, you can show, in fact uh, it's a homework exercise, I ask you to, to do it, you know, to do this. Uh, you can show that uh, by following these, these steps, this recipe, like, you can convert a, uh, a DFA in other words, uh, that, that recognizes a uh, regular language by definition. So, 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 so remember, uh, perhaps I should step back up a little bit. What, um, what ultimately what you're trying to do is that you, you're given a language, right? A language, not a machine. You're given a language, but you happen to know uh, that that language is a regular language. And you're asked to find a grammar, uh, a CFG, for that language. And you know that that language is a regular language. It's sort of like a subclass. It's a special case. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a CFL. It's a context-free language. But it's also a uh, regular language. And therefore there's a machine, by definition, that recognizes it. That's, that's your DFA. So, uh, you can use this procedure now. You can take that DFA and convert it into uh, a CFL. Uh, well, C uh, C CFG, so a grammar. So you can you convert the machine into a grammar. And uh, since that grammar will generate the same language as recognized by the machine, by the DFA, well, uh, that grammar uh, will be the, the grammar that recognizes the language you started with, right? Because the language you started with, that's what you're trying to find the grammar for that. But that language is a uh, regular language. Okay, so how do you, how do you, how do you do that? How do you, so the, the issue, the problem boils down to how do you convert the machine, the automaton, into uh, a CFG, into a grammar? How do you go from the machine to a grammar? Well, uh, start with the machine, of course. Have a look at its states. So for each state in the machine, this DFA, co uh, create a corresponding variable, right? a variable symbol. So uh, state QI, there will be a corresponding variable RI. Okay? Just, that's your first step, one to one. Have a look at the machine, find all its uh, states, and then for each state, uh, say QI, uh, create a variable in your, in your grammar that you're constructing. You know, you're, you're in the process now of creating a grammar, a, a C of G. So create uh, a corresponding uh, variable, a variable symbol, so a capital letter, let's say, RI, corresponding to state QI. All right? Now for the machine, for each uh, transition like this, so if Remember, a bit of revision from chapter one, if you're in state, if the DFA is, uh, uh, the input string comes in and uh, the machine, the DFA, is currently in state QI and it's reading input symbol A, then the transition function will say that the next state will be QJ. Okay? So the state of the machine will change from QI to QJ. Right? Well, corresponding to that transition rule, that mapping, like, corresponding to that, you have the, the, a corresponding substitution rule in your grammar. And that rule is uh, your RI, which you know, the RI corresponds to state QI, remember, from, from here. Okay? Uh, the A here, well, that's the, the current symbol in the input string that you're reading. Okay, so the same A here. 
and uh, Rj is the uh, equivalent um, variable that corresponds to your next state, right? Qj. Okay? So for each transition uh, rule like this, you have a substitution rule like that. Okay? And uh, there's one further step. Um, if, if the next step, well, if your final step it belongs to the set of accept states, in other words, uh, if, if uh, the, your, the final, well, if, if a state belongs to, uh, to F, if, if this QI is a, an accept state, right? it, it belongs to big F, then uh, your so the uh, you'll have this rule where the mm, the variable R I that, that corresponds to state Q I uh, you'll have this uh, substitution rule that R I goes to the empty string. Okay. Now if you play around, with, you say you play around with these three three steps, if you like. Um, it, it'll become fairly clear to you why it works uh, that the grammar that you generate um, you know, here's, here's the grammar that you've created, the C of G that it will generate the same language as the machine, the DFA, the automaton, recognizes so uh, ask you to do that for homework um, show, show that that's the case uh, you know, by, f by following these steps this um, conversion process going from uh, DFA uh, you know, with these transition rules to uh, a grammar, uh, context free grammar, C of G, with these uh, substitution rules and, and this one. Okay? So, just summarizing quickly so if the language you're asked to find a grammar for, you know, you're asked to find a grammar that uh, generates that language. If you happen to know, or you can detect, or you know, suspect um, that that, uh, that language is a regular language, then you can do this trick. You can uh, find, and well, I guess that assumes you also know what the, the automaton is that recognizes that language. Uh, well, assuming, assuming you have that, or if you don't, maybe you can find it. Uh, but once you have the automaton, the, the DFA, that uh, recognizes that language, well then you can c easily, easily, because you know, it's pretty easy, it's uh, routine, you can quickly convert that DFA into uh, a CFG, the grammar. You can go from, you can convert the automaton into a grammar, and therefore you have the grammar for the language you started with because that language uh, happens to be a uh, regular language. Now, it's a special case, of course. Uh, there will be other languages uh, that are uh, CFLs, they are context-free languages, but they're not um, regular languages. Right? Remember the, the set, class, category, whatever, of uh, context-free languages is larger than the category set family of regular languages. Right? Regular languages is a subset of uh, context-free languages. All right, now it's the third tip. Uh, uh, sort of hard to put into words. Um, you need to get the idea from a series of examples. Now we've done some. Uh, now, uh, it might look, you, you, you look at a particular language and you say, oh gosh, uh, that looks as though uh, the, 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 the language cannot be recognized by a finite machine, like the, the recognition or generating a language, because that, that's what you're trying to do, try and find a grammar that will uh, generate the language. So you can't you can't use this one because it uh, it looks as though that language uh, is a non-regular language. 
Uh, it, it will requ require infinite resources, uh, infinite memory to to have a, an automaton recognize it. So, so it's a non-regular language. But you can still find maybe maybe you can still find a grammar for it uh, by by having in the grammar um, having uh, substitution rules that uh, allow you to generate that. Uh, that language. Now that's pretty vague. Uh, I'll probably, I think, I'll, easier to start with a concrete example uh, and give you the idea, and then talk about the idea. Uh, okay, so take take this language here. That uh, is a non-regular language because uh, to to use a machine to do that, you'd need infinite memory. So you you need to count up the number of uh, zero. Now n n there's no limit to n. Well. Yeah, it's obviously non-negative, but you know, there's no upper limit to n, so it could be huge. So to to uh, recognize, you know, have an automaton recognize this language, that machine would have to count up the number of zeros. But n could be anything, could be infinite. Right? Uh, so you need to count up the number of zeros before uh, you start counting the ones. But that need, that requires infinite memory. So you you can't. You can't do that with a, an automaton, right? But how about with a, a grammar? Can you do it with a grammar? Well, you can't now, uh, in this special case, because you've got the two ends of the same, uh, that gives you a clue. You might be able to have a substitution rule that takes this, this sort of form, okay? Uh, where your R is substituted for this, this string of symbols uh, mixed. Well, here's your R again. So you've got you've got a kind of recursion. Uh, this, this rule, substitution rule, is recursive because included in the the right hand side of your of your substitution rule is is your R again, the same variable. Okay. But uh, this this can be very useful because uh, yeah. Well, To get out of the picture a bit, I need both both squares uh, because um, we we could have here now the no, no. I can't see <laughs> yeah here's here's the form of the strings it'll be a, you know n zeros followed by uh, n ones but uh, if you have if you put a zero here and a one there. Well, we could apply this uh, substitution rule n times, okay, until we generate uh, zero n one to the n, and then we could have a, an, uh, another uh, another uh, substitution rule r arrow um, empty string you know, epsilon, okay. That that would generate us generate that sort of thing for us. So, using using this kind of rule, where uh, what's what's on the left hand side of the you know, what what gets substituted? Uh, sub huh. How do I say that? Well, the right hand side, just this. The the left hand side of the right. This is the right hand side, and that's the left hand. That's what's left of R. Let's say, put it that way. Um, so you might be able to have the U corresponding to this part here, and the V corresponding.